couldn't he just have forgiven? Because this is a moral universe, Richard. Moral. And just forgiving doesn't make sense. Mm, amen. Here's a fascinating segment of debate between John Lennox and Richard Dawkins on science and God. Do you really think that the, the creator of this magnificent edifice of the universe, these, the expanding universe, the galaxies, he really couldn't think of a better way to get rid of the sins on this one little speck of dust than to have himself tortured? He's the one who's doing the forgiving after all. Couldn't he just have forgiven? Mm. Because this is a moral universe, Richard, and just forgiving doesn't make sense. You mean he has to kill himself in order he to... He doesn't kill himself. Or get himself killed, God, tortured. God, God sends his son into the world to provide forgiveness and to provide a basis Amen. on which he can justly bring uh, forgiveness to me. Now... He has to get himself killed in order to do well, that. Well, half a minute. We need to step back from this a little bit because it's actually a highly relevant topic. In your world, where is justice nowhere justice. to be found well it's a, justice is a human construct of great importance in human affairs and it's something that we have most of us have a, a sense of uh, which i think probably can be given <laughs> some sort of darwinian explanation but i don't see where you're taking this well could could have a darwinian explanation but he doesn't know because really, when you have this understanding that there's not a God, you can only go so far. You get to about here, and then it stops. No matter where you go, no matter what science or math you use, it just stops right there. But real quick, I wanted to give a shout out to whoever created this video, because right now it's fire. They got the captions up top. They're throwing in the, the memes at the bottom. Yo, that's cool. That's cool. But also, I want to say shout out to Dr. Frank Turk, because I was just watching a video of his, a lecture of his um, this morning. And in the lecture, he was talking about this sergeant. And Rest in peace to him. God rest his soul. His name is Michael A. Mansour. And well, actually, I don't know if he's a sergeant, but he's a soldier. And um, while he was on a mission, there was a firefight happening and a grenade was thrown. And he ended up jumping on the grenade, saving his two soldiers that were with him. And what greater love is that than to sacrifice yourself for somebody else that you chose to give your life for somebody? And, you know, Richard Darkman was talking about earlier about, oh, well, he couldn't think of a better idea. What's more loving than that? What's more loving than sacrificing yourself for others? And not only did Jesus sacrifice himself for you and me, he sacrificed himself for the entire world. But unfortunately, the world doesn't see that and doesn't respect that sacrifice. So therefore, they kind of run from it or they want to accept their own sacrifice, knowing that they can't pay for it. I'm so very glad today that I can say that I serve a loving God who not only created me, but said, you know what? I created him to be a certain way, but unfortunately with his free will, he decided to go against that and go against what it is that means to be in fellowship with me, but yet I will still make a way for him. That's who we serve as Christians. We serve a God that still made a way. Let's keep getting into the video. Let's keep learning from Dr. John Lennox, man. Well, I tell you what, his voice, I can listen to him talk for hours. Give me some cookies and milk, milk and cookies, and some John Lennox. Let's do this. Uh, my question is, is there any ultimate justice? No, nah, bro. You see, you say this is petty. I'm saying I find myself in a world which is a broken world. Mm. I find myself in a world where there's massive injustice, mm -hmm. where many people won't get it. We're so privileged. We live in Oxford and so on. We've got enough money to live on, etc., etc. But if there is no God, then there's no ultimate justice. Mm. And one of the things that the resurrection transforms for me from pettiness right into center stage is if this is true then there's real hope that there'd be a rational evaluation and fair justice at the end of the world but atheism doesn't give you that okay suppose mm -hmm. there is no hope suppose there is no justice suppose there's nothing but misery and darkness and bleakness mm -hmm. suppose there is nothing that we would wish for nothing that we would hope for that would suck. too bad it, that doesn't make it true just because god would make us feel good well, of course it doesn't. Well, then why do you make bring that argument up? Because I believe that there is evidence that it is true. Mm. Lennox highlights the idea of a just God, which is central to Christian teaching. Amen. Jesus' death on the cross was a display of God's own justice in paying the penalty of the sins of the world. Thereby, well. the cross also gives believers the assurance of ultimate justice and vindication in the life to come. Mm. While on the other hand, atheism just doesn't have any response to injustice faced by innocent people in this world. Back. In Dawkins' own words, too bad. Oh, too bad. I don't believe in the resurrection just like that. Mm. Uh, because faith 
is based on evidence. But I've changed the ground again. What you, what you said before was that there is no hope without God. And it sounded well, that's like true. Was, that's absolutely true. Okay. You just admitted it. Uh, so I it, haven't admitted it. I said, if that's true, yes. so what? I didn't say it was true. But anyway, uh, but if that's the true, question so what? to be decided then is, is there a God and has he revealed himself? And that's where, again, I think this pettiness needs to be pushed aside because I can't get to know you as a person. You're not just a scientific object. I can look mm. at you through a, 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 a telescope or a magnifying glass. I could even dissect you and so on and so forth. But because you are a person, I cannot get to know you unless you're prepared to reveal yourself to me. So the fact that the claim of, of Christ to be the truth, to be God incarnate, that makes perfect sense to me because if there is a God who invented this wonderful, marvelous universe with all its science and all the rest, mm -hmm. then he has taken the initiative in getting to know us. And Amen. Amen right there. I tell you what, that's what we serve today, man. Forget all the other guys out there that are either causing chaos, like, you know, if you think about Loki, right, he's a guy of mischief, right? Or if you think about all these other guys like Zeus, who's kind of like lightweight petty and uh, a, a whore, really, because he'd be sleeping with everybody, everybody and a mama for real, for real. So we serve a God that truly loves us and truly wants a relationship with us. We serve a God that is just and loving. So not only is he willing to pay for my sin, he wants to pay for my sin and get to know me. He wants me to get to know him. He wants to have a true relationship, and that's why so many Christians believe that, you know, it's not really religion, but it's a relationship that you have when you actually understand who God is, when you're actually praying to someone who answers back, when you're actually fellowshipping with a God who will be there for you, that has shown he's going to be there for you, that he literally put himself in our reality and shown us what we need to do as people to have that fellowship and have everlasting life. That's what love is right there. So he wants to have a relationship. He wants to be a friend that's closer than a brother. That's the God that we serve. The God that we serve as Christians. We don't have to think about or question or not if God loves us or wants to have a relationship with us. He tells us. He has given us his word. He has given us his word that says he wants to have a relationship. That he came to die for us on the cross. That we are sons to him. That he is our father. You don't get no better than that. You don't get no more loving than that. But let's get back into it revealing himself to us and he's revealed himself to us at the level we can understand we're mm -hmm. persons he's a person that at least makes sense so one of the very important questions to ask is is that really true or is this simply myth and fantasy well myth and fantasy for me <laughs> yeah well for the christians the incarnation of jesus is the ultimate special revelation of god to humankind the expression of his love in the person of Christ is the proof that God is not distant but desires to connect with humankind. Amen. In his book, the atheist New Testament scholar Bart Ehrman has to say this about those people who claim that Jesus never existed. The Messiah was supposed to overthrow the enemies and so if you're going to make up a Messiah, you'd make up a powerful Messiah. You wouldn't make up somebody who was humiliated, tortured, and then killed by the mm, enemies. Okay. You could possibly persuade me that there was some kind of creative force in the universe. There was some kind of physical, mathematical genius who, who created everything. The expanding universe devised quantum theory, relativity, and all that. You could possibly persuade me of that. But that is radically and fundamentally incompatible with the sort of God who cares about sin, the sort of God who cares about what what you do with your genitals the sort of god who who, who is interested who has the slightest what? interest in your <laughs> private thoughts uh, and wickednesses and things like that surely you can see that a god who's grand enough to make the universe is not going to give a tuppenny cuss about what 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 you're thinking about and and your sins and things like that so you problem. think that morality is not important of course i don't think morality is not important well, i'm a human it being sounds like you're saying no, it isn't I'm, a important. Hum, I'm a human being and i live in a society of human beings and within a society of human beings morality is of course important but we are one of billions of planets on a huge scale and a cosmic god who bothers about this kind of human scale is not the kind of god that is, is that is compatible with a scientific view of the universe it's a medieval view hold on so we got this god right that's grand that created everything so he's talking about the billions and billions and billions of things right so in those billions and billions and billions of things are like very very small details 
So if you want to create all these big things, and even when you get to the subatomic level, there's a lot more detail that goes in that. Do you think this guy's not detailed oriented? That the fine tuning that goes on, he doesn't know about? So then you think that he cares about all this fine tuning for all this other stuff, but not the people that are actually conscious in it. So he cares about how stars are created and how to control gravity and all these other things. But yet he doesn't care about the people that he wants to have a relationship with. How does that make any sense? Is it like, am I tripping? Am I tripping to think that a guy that does all this stuff is not going to care about the people that he's trying to have a relationship with? Uh-huh. But that's where he has to come from for, I guess, it to make sense to him. And that just blows my mind. I may be too dumb to be an atheist. That's probably what it is. Or too smart. Either way, let's get back into it. But do you think that size is the measure of importance? Incidentally, on a logarithmic scale, you are about halfway between the atom and the universe. So if God thinks in terms of logarithms, your point falls, I think. I mean, this is in a sense an emotional argument we've come into now. And I don't think um, so at all. I want to, I want to, if, if, if I were going to respect a God, it would be the kind of God who, the sort of God that Carl Sagan might have, might have worshipped, not the sort of medieval God who fusses about sin, the obsession with sin and, and righteousness. Wait, time out. You just talked about that being an emotional argument for the Christians, but you're going to talk about this? Like, this ain't emotional? Like, yo, I, if I was going to re represent a God or believe in a God, he's going to be this God who's, ooh, all this and that. Am I tripping? Did he just say what? Hold on. Am I tri Hold on. I, I don't... Yeah, let's get back into it. Sort of, I, I keep coming back to this word petty and I stand by it. That it's intriguing emotional. that Dawkins does care about morality, but on what grounds does he base his morality? For every right and wrong, there has to be a moral judgment, and for him, he simply brushes it off as social construct. But he fails to understand that the Western social moral construct is founded on God and the Bible. The God of Christianity cares about sin so much so that he chose to send his son to die on behalf of sinful human race. We conclude with the words of John Lennox. Because if God is real and has revealed himself, then it's, it's through a relationship with him that we really can enjoy a full life, Amen. science included. Yes. Mm, let's go with the scriptures. Shout out who made this video. No, thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Hey man, so that was John Lennox talking with Dr. Richard Dawkins about his understanding of Christ and who God is. So I really don't have nothing else to add to this video. It's a great video just like to listen to. And it really just continues to help me grow my faith because really just listening to the atheist point of view, or at least Richard Dawkins point of view, that made no sense to me at all. Absolutely none especially with some of the arguments that he used. But anyway, with that being said, this has been your boy, Descriptor Plug Albert. If you made it up to this point, I appreciate you so very much. If you want to like and subscribe and comment and all that fun stuff, cool. Help the channel grow. We do reactions over here. And also, if you want to share your testimony, hit your boy up. I'll have you on and we'll share your testimony because one thing I like to do is go live and have people share what God has done in their life because that's a beautiful thing to me. With that being said, I'm out.